so thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. It's a real privilege to be here. Uh, boy, to our hosts from Red 8, what an amazing facility, and I think they've got a great afternoon in store for you. Uh, they've got some really amazing things for you to see. Uh, one of them, of course, is the V-Block. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, we already saw some of the slides going by talking about change. Change is happening quickly. Change is not something, though, that people inherently are comfortable with, but you have to get comfortable with it and figure out how to embrace it and change the way you go about managing infrastructure. And a whole piece of that that we like to talk about is what you stop doing, what you don't have to do. You know, we see different roles in the business all beginning to merge as we talk about the impact of large databases and the ability that they have to impact the bottom line of the business. So, you know, we're really not talking about back office stuff anymore. We're talking about stuff that is key and in the profit and revenue path of companies. And that means you've got to be quick, quick, quick. And that means you've got to figure out what to do and figure out more importantly what not to do. And we're going to help you with that. Um, so, this is, gosh, I think I, I learned computer science on a machine that didn't look that different than that. Who here has used punch cards? See, we outnumber all you young ones. <laughs> okay, you better watch it. Okay, we're coming after you. This is good, though. You guys keep us going. Um, <laughs> so here, here's the key. If IT inside were always going as quickly as people wanted, I don't think we would have seen all of the changes happen over the last 25 years that have been driven by the user community. We saw the drive from mainframes to mini computers. We saw the drive from mini computers to client server to PCs. We then deal with issues like sprawl and compliance. Not everything these guys did was all bad. Some of us were doing some good stuff back then. But the fact that Amazon exists is testimony to the fact that we need to do better. I love Amazon. I absolutely love it. I think it's an incredible thing to have out there because it pushes us all to go better and do better. So what is the VCE experience? I'm going to talk, I don't think I show you a product until we get pretty far into this, but it's really talking about what the experience of the owner and consumer and operator of critical infrastructure, what their life should be like, what we enable and what we let you do and what we let you not do that frankly, I mean, I, I look around. There are people doing the same thing in all of these buildings, and none of them operate computers as their primary core business, or integrate computers as their primary core business, or figure out what switch to use, or what version of firmware, or all of these things. Maybe we can just agree on a way to do it, and then use factory economics to do it, so we don't have to. That's kind of one of the premises behind VCE. And when, when VCE started, I joined it about four years ago, we didn't have this recipe yet. I, I joined it, we were a thing called Acadia. We had this phrase, build, operate, transfer. The build happened after the 200 boxes of stuff showed up at your site. And we thought we'd come in and we'd be better at building it. And I don't know if we were or not, um, but our customers said, like the recipe, not sure I like the UPS guy so much. I, I'm getting to know him well, though. We're going on vacation <laughs> together. Okay, but this isn't that much different. So we kind of had to do a check stop. And we restarted the company, and that's when it changed from Acadia to VCE, which became a manufacturer of pre-integrated converged infrastructure, or what we sometimes call true converged infrastructure. The whole point here is we are providing building blocks for cloud methodologies that instead of you starting with the component, you're starting with something a whole lot bigger. So you can immediately move to the integration that is closer to your business, closer to your end users, closer to your customers and your customers' customers. In other words, you get quickly to value and we get you out of some of the minutia. So we like to say industry-defining levels of integration. If I rewrote this, I would say fanatical levels of integration. If you're going to trust us to mine the details, we better mine them pretty seriously. And we better write it all down. And then we better go and get all the ISO certifications to prove it. And then we better build them the same again and again and again. So when yours breaks, uh, guess what? It's a computer. The only thing I can promise you is it will break sooner or later. 
Ours are exactly like yours. We don't have to ask, hey, how's it configured? We're just going to say, hey, our records show you're on RCM 4.5.14. Are you still there? Yep. Good. I'm debugging on one just like yours. By the way, when you read RCM 4.514, it specifies the use of VMware 5.1 U1.2.2 242 upgrade B build 247. Why do we go to such extent? Because precision matters, and we probably know that the day before build isn't such a good one. I've had more and more accounts I go into and talk to, and I say, we're going to do all this work so you don't have to, and we are not going to say go until it's known, good, ready. They say, how long does it take? Some things, a few days. Some things, a couple weeks. Believe it or not, though, we've gotten pretty good over four years at knowing where all the weak points are. And every product has points where it's not necessarily weak, but you have complex integration and touch points with other products, maybe from different vendors. And we understand where those touch points are and where the strengths and weaknesses of those are. And our test platform, which is proprietary, which we have developed, which has thousands of tests in it that we run every time we change an element, particularly exercises those places where we found trouble before. So it's really pretty, pretty interesting. Where are we as a company today? Um, we're cutting off a little bit of the bottom here, but we've got about 1,700 systems delivered. This is really close to 2,000 now. These slides are a little bit old. Um, we are ISO certified, and while we have a highly rigorous and prescriptive architecture, we have many options within that architecture to scale V-blocks. We have systems that range from, you know, four relatively low-end processors to systems that go into the hundreds and hundreds. And some of the things that I've been teaching um, our team here over the last couple of days about, can't really talk about them in a large room like this, but hundreds is kind of Nice, but we're shooting a lot bigger. We're shooting a lot bigger as well. One of the key points that I think most of our customers appreciate is the time to value, the accelerated delivery services. One of the things that we are very, very fanatical about is that when you order a V-Block, that V-Block is on your floor in less than 45 days, provided we haven't done and designed you a new one. Sometimes we design people a new kind of V-Block. Usually they're called universities and things like that. But when we push another copy of a V-Block off the manufacturing line, it's 45 days or less after you have told us to begin. And then typically we're running your VMs within three days after it hits the floor and our build team or our partners build teams. We are tightly integrated together for these delivery processes. It is typically about three days and we're spinning VMs. And you're wondering what the team is going to do for the last two days, and that's where instruction happens. So it's really a pretty amazing thing to watch. VCE is all about our customer experience and getting as quickly as possible to your ability to operate and run systems. It's all about your day one experience. And we're losing our screen here. But really what this is about, it's a design for continuous availability. V-blocks are designed with complete redundancy in all of the componentry so that we can do live upgrades of the systems. It's about optimization. It's about the interoperability testing. It's about choosing components that work together and make sense together so that you have the ability to not say, gosh, you know, which of these switches do I need to use? Which of these different parts? The capacity elements, we give you a lot of flexibility, okay? I mean, we don't care what CPU is in there. We test them. But the fact is, you choose the capacity elements as you need while the infrastructure around it is prescribed. Really, one of the key components, again, is the update validation. When new things come out, we integrate them in. And they go into the RCM, and we'll talk about that a little bit, our regression testing, and then our support services.